Should you get rid of your router table for one of these? Well, I'm here to tell you that I might, and I've been waiting a year to tell all of you about this product. This is the new TSO Products router table for the Festool MFT. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, if you have an MFT, if you're going to job sites or you have a setup like I do, now you have a little router table which can be built in to this already great table and this great system. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to put it together and do a couple of demonstrations on the effectiveness of the dust collection, how easy it is to use, how nice it is to have the additional support, and another accessory that comes out as well. Spoiler alert, these are not included in it, but they work in it and this thing is just awesome. One year, one year I've been waiting. So when you get your router table, it's going to come with multiple components that you see here. We have the MDF uh, router table itself. Uh, we've got a, a guard for the bit. We have the plate, which connects to multiple different uh, routers. The one that I will be using for mine will be the Makita because I don't uh, love this router for other uses, so it will be my permanent router uh, for this router table. These are the two brackets uh, that connect to the table itself, which will connect to the MFT. Then we have our aluminum fence. We have our sacrificial MDF pieces. We've got dust collection here, and we've got some different plugs, which you'll see in the video. And then we have a nice little um, assortment of hardware all of which will be used to assemble this. Now, I've actually already had this thing assembled. I've been trying it out, testing it. Um, I wanted to disassemble it and reassemble it here in this video. Um, one thing I will point out is that if you miss anything in this video, you don't understand, they make a very, very good guide that walks you through step-by-step -step how you go about setting this up. But the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to utilize these brackets, and these brackets will attach to the table uh, which you'll see shortly. But you'll notice that there's holes located here and here, and then there's three holes here, there's holes here, and the reason for that is because this can be set up in two different configurations. I can either have it running where the brackets are back here and I'm pushing through this way and it's hanging off the edge of the table. I'll put up a little um, picture here while I'm talking about this so you can see that it can be set up in different configurations. Um, or it can be set up to where it attaches to the table this way and maybe you're pushing through uh, in whatever direction and you're using your MFT for support. So the way that I am going to set mine up is to where it would utilize the support of the table itself. So in order to do that, we're gonna put these brackets here just like this. And the hardware that you will need for that are these four black screws. There are only four, this is what they are used for. And we simply screw these in to the MDF. So now you can see this is going to mount to my table like this, giving me the ability to push materials through this way, hooking up dust collection on the backside. So this will all make more sense here shortly. Next, I'm going to attach the brackets that will go to this. What you need for those are these brackets right here. You will need these four small hex bolts. These will go two on each side. Then we are gonna take the two longer ones. Those are gonna go in the center. And with those, there are two springs that come with it. Those springs go over the top just like that. And then we're gonna be adding these T-nuts. And these are what really make taking this thing on and off the table uh, effortless, really, really nice. And you'll see that here momentarily. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the bracket, put our bolt through and attach this T-nut. And we're not gonna tighten this down too tight because we, you see that spring action? That's what we're looking for. From here, we're gonna put one of these in the top and one of these in the bottom. Um, I'm just using a five millimeter uh, driver. This is not the one that actually comes with it. They do send one that comes with it and it actually looks like this. Um, but we can get these tightened down and then we'll be able to go ahead and test it on the MFT. Now what's really nice about these T-nuts is that because there's a little groove uh, etched into the edge of this, it'll keep these T-nuts in this orientation here, which is important because those are gonna go right into this channel. And then if you look here, you'll see a little groove cut out. 
that's to go right over the edge of this. Switch the camera angle up just a bit so you get a better visual, but this just goes on at a slight angle like you see here, and then it just falls right in just like that. And now what I can do, I mentioned before that uh, I left everything a little bit loose. So from here, I can go ahead and tighten these down. And finally, the thing that is going to attach this in a sturdy way to the table is this screw. But it's important to note, you wanna make sure that you push the screw in because that's gonna allow the T-nut to turn and clear, which is gonna be what actually grabs these ridges right here. So you wanna make sure that you push it in uh, when you're tightening it down. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is make sure that I am nice and level across. And in the event that you're not, there are uh, shims that they provide, and you'll see they have three cutouts. Those cutouts go right in line with the bolts that we used for the bracket. So if you needed to raise this up slightly, you would use these shims. It comes with a total of four. And before moving on to the next step, I'm just placing these final two screws in the top, making sure that they are below the surface. Next, I wanna cover uh, installing the actual router plate. And the reason for this is because I'd, I'd rather do this before I do the fence portion. Now this plate will work with DeWalt, which is indicated with a D. We have Milwaukee, which is rep, uh, represented with an MI, Makita, MA, and then you have B3 and B4, and those are for Bosch, either a three hole pattern or a four hole pattern. So it's compatible with most of the uh, trim routers, at least the majority of the very popular ones. So what you wanna do is just line it up to where it matches whatever your base is. Now, something that I did because <laughs> I don't wanna admit it, but it was very uh, challenging the first time I put this on, trying to make sure that I had it turned the right direction. When I took it apart, I actually just marked what the top uh, hole location was gonna be. And then now all I have to do is just line it up with that. And now I can see I have access to all four of the holes, one, two, three, four. Now the screws that we are using for that are these four small screws here. And as you can imagine, we're just gonna screw them in. <laughs> okay, so now we have our router housing installed. So from here, we'll go ahead and drop it into the table and I'll show you how you get everything level. And what we have here are, these are gonna be the whole locations that the screws go through and hold this thing down to the table. And then what you see here in the four corners, are actually how you adjust to make sure that this is all perfectly level and it's just accessed underneath with a small hex screw that adjusts the table up and down. Now mine is already adjusted uh, because I, like I said, I've already assembled this one time. And so from here I can go ahead and just put in my bolts to lock this down. Earlier I'd mentioned it comes with uh, some little plugs. Well, these plugs, it's optional, you don't have to do this, but these plugs you can just put into the holes of the ones that you're not using. Um, if you intend on switching these out, different routers, um, then maybe this isn't you know, completely necessary. Um, but for me, I'm just gonna be leaving the Makita router in there because I use my DeWalt for pretty much everything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug these up. Now we'll get into the fence. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is you'll notice that there is this reset, these two recessed holes. What we're gonna do is these are actually threaded. So we're gonna take the last two remaining uh, short screws like this. And these are going to get threaded in there. And those screws are used for the dust collection port which can actually be done two ways. So if this was sitting on the table such as this, and I wanted the dust collection to come in this direction, I can, or if I want to make it vertical, I can also do it because it has the spare set of holes. So pretty cool, good for flexibility. I'll be doing mine this way, and then I'll take two of these star knobs and twist those on to tighten them down. Next, I'm gonna show you how to get your fence uh, in these slots and how that works. The fence is gonna operate off of these. So if you can see, I think I set the camera up so you can see in there, there's actually a slot 
cut specifically for this. So this slides back and forth, doesn't drop out. And then when you, if you needed to take it out, it just comes out of this hole, lines back up with that slot. So if we put one in each side, we can then take the fence, place it over those bolts, and then it's just held down with a couple of these star knobs again. Next, I can put on the auxiliary fences and you'll see here, similar design. Everything that goes on uses one of these T-nuts here, just like this. And each one requires two. So we can just slide those in, line them up with the corresponding hole locations. And just like that, we have it through and it slides left and right freely. And I'm sure you guessed it. These are just held on by these star knobs. Now this comes with a few accessories included, uh, which I will now start discussing some of those different included features. And the first of which is some stops. Now, if you look here, you'll notice that there is a, a little ridge on this, and that is so it fits directly into that channel, which will reduce any uh, deflection or anything like that. Now, these are just as easy as everything else to install, where it's gonna operate off of one of those T-bolts and star nuts, and once you tighten this thing down, you're not getting any deflection. It just, it sits perfectly flush against the fence, and it does come with two, so you could have multiple ones set up on the outfeed side. Uh, if you're doing something, you know, side to side and you have to go limit your uh, direction both ways, you can put one on each side. These are really great and very easy to install, very quick to take on and off just due to the nature of the on-off system being these star knobs. Slide right out and we're good. Now the next thing that's included is one of these uh, guards here. And just like everything else, operate off these T-nuts. And this does have some of the smaller star knobs. No reason to have the big ones in this application, but very easy to adjust left and right, loosen it, raise it up to whatever the height is on the bit or whatever protection you want, and there you go. And finally, one last feature that it does come with is a starter pin, which simply screws down right here, and now you have a starter pin for any of your material. Now, this next accessory does not come with it, but it is my favorite accessory that you can add to it, and that is the Jessam rollers for the router table. Now I already owned these uh, for my other router table, but they operate off the same style bolt, which means they can slide in and out. Like I said, these are not included. It is an additional purchase that you can make, uh, but I would absolutely recommend taking a look at these. I had them on my table saw. It's just such a great tool, the way that it works for those that don't know. So these are locked down to lock it in place. These are locked down to lock the up and down movement. So what you would do is you would take your board, your material, and to set this with these, you simply put a little bit of downward pressure, tighten that down, tighten that down. And now what this does is it stops it from being able to come back at you. And it will also drive the workpiece into the fence because the wheels are turned at a slight angle, just like this. So it keeps constant pressure down and See how they're not turning? I can pull out if I absolutely needed to, but it just does a really good job of making sure that it keeps the material flat to the table and flat to the fence, giving you much better results. All right, now I actually uh, want to use it and show you guys um, how nice of an addition this could be to the MFT. Um, while I'm doing this, one thing that I will say is I was fortunate enough to uh, actually see this about a year ago when it was in development. And I've seen different prototypes and the changes and modifications, and I actually got to give my opinions uh, on some things. And this is a very different router table than the one that I originally saw. And I've been very excited and waiting for this to be released just so I could put it in my shop and I could use it because 
I think like most people, you'll, you'll start to realize that you can really get by with just about everything that you need to do uh, with bits that only need a quarter of an inch. So small things, small roundovers. Now granted, if, you're, if it's a big, huge work piece, you're not gonna take that to a small router table or even a large router table. Um, you're probably gonna bring the router to it. Um, but I would say 90% of the time when I'm using a router, it's a trim router. Uh, it is with a quarter inch bit and it is something that I just need to do a quick small profile on. So for me, being able to have this and not sacrifice the space, oh, and by the way, I can take it on and off, is really, really nice um, to the point where I've actually been considering getting rid of my large router table because the only benefit for me at this point to having a large router table is to be able to use half inch bits uh, when doing things like making doors, rails and styles, um, and you need a particular bit set that you can only get in a half inch. You know, that's where it's nice, but man, how often am I doing that? And it really has taken up a lot of space. And there's probably other ways uh, that I could get by or just do a different design. So um, I'm, I'm really, really thoroughly impressed with this little router table. It's really good. I'm going to show you now. Um, and there's also one other thing that I'll show you. But first, let's cut some stuff. Now, I'm not going to go like buck wild in this video and, you know, show you all kinds of different ways that you can use a router table or a route because uh, if you're watching this, you probably know how to use a router table and what it's used for. What I want to demonstrate is, um, one, how convenient it would be for somebody who's at a job site or in your own shop that has MFTs. Um, and I guess I should say, to be fair, because I don't know if I've uh, stated this specifically. This is designed for a Festool MFT. If you're somebody that wishes they had a nice little router table set up um, in a job site or with their existing table and they don't want to give up a bunch of space, this is an excellent solution and it is extremely sturdy. Um, before I was mentioning, I got to see the different uh, changes that have happened in this and the first couple that I uh, got, the ex got to experience and got to try, um, were not, so they, they came up with some excellent solutions um, for this. So, I wanna demonstrate, <laughs> um, one, how it can be nice to just have this nice little table and have all the support for your MFTs, um, but also show you maybe the differences between um, making cuts with dust collection versus without it, um, the different kinds of cuts, and obviously there's other things that incorporate or that, that affect dust collection itself, but you will see a significant difference between the two. And furthermore, if you're using, depending on the router that you're using, um, you can get the dust collection even better uh, by having a port on the actual router from underneath than you're getting it from underneath and you're getting it from the back of the fence. So that was a lot of talking. Now I'm gonna cut something. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut a rabbit on the edge of this board, the bit that I'm using, this is one of these new uh, Astro coated HP bits from Bits and Bits. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out Bits and Bits, I would strongly encourage it because they do make some fantastic router bits. But we're just gonna do a rabbit on the end of this. I will hook up dust collection. We'll see what is remaining. And uh, then I'll do it without dust collection just so you can see see the difference. So not only do I have a really nice, consistent, uh, clean cut, I mean, there's barely anything left here. You see a little chip out uh, from when I went through, but other than that, the dust collection is really, <laughs> really good on this, just straight, um, from the fence. Now, this is a situation where the, the bit and everything that's cutting, it's, you know, enclosed and it will have, you know, good dust collection. Now, if I was to do uh, like a groove, obviously I'd probably get the spray out because I don't have dust collection from underneath, which is what would be required in this scenario. Um, but on a cut like this, I mean, it is, it is great. So the fence, the dust collection on the fence can be very effective. Let's just do it real quick without it. So now besides the, all the dust that you see on my clothes and my shoes and the router table 
itself, all that dust that's built up right there. Matter of fact, let's, I wonder if I can do this without it all falling off. No, it all fell, but it's clear. You can even see, I'll bring you in and show you. So down there, that's the, the floor after making that, that cut. And then you can see on the table itself. Uh, and I pushed a bunch of it forward but pretty significant difference between the other cut. Now, I know what some of you guys might be thinking. You might be thinking, well, that's great, but it's just too small. What if I don't have the support? Or better yet, what if, earlier in the video, I said that you can configure this a couple of different ways. What if I wanted mine turned, so then my outfeed, there was nothing there, right? Like you didn't have the, the table here. Um, that's fine. They've thought of something for that as well. And guess what? They used the exact same method for attaching it. And that is an MFT table extension. So same principle, but in a scenario like that, where if you wanted to turn this this direction and then have outfeed support, or better yet, infeed support, you could absolutely do that. And this, so this can be mounted on either side. Um, I'm gonna mount it on this side just because that's what I have available. Um, but the width of it is the same as an MFT if you were to use it in its normal configuration. Obviously mine are turned uh, and I use them long ways. But a regular MFT, you would typically stand on this side, make your cuts, and then you don't have a lot of space at the end. This solves that problem and it goes on just like the other and locks down and now I have a nice, sturdy, stable platform. Yes, I know it's not aligned, um, but I have the bars that connect my MFTs together so I can only go this far over. But now I have additional work surface. What this would also be great for is if you've ever cut on an MFT and you always wished you had somewhere to put your saw down, but there's just not enough space with the piece of material and everything, here you go. So, and these are sold separately. Uh, to be clear, I don't think I stated the price yet. This is $299. Uh, that does not include the Jessam guides. It is $299 with everything I showed you minus that. Um, they also have other accessories and stuff like uh, Hedgehog makes like a small little, um, what are they called? Oh yeah, feather boards. And uh, this has some uh, T-Track in it, just like anything else. So you can put things that you would be able to put in any other T-Track in that right there. And then this comes in at 189.95, this table extension, and that does come with the extension and the brackets that you need in order to actually mount it to your table, which is nice because you kind of need that. And again, I can't stress enough how easy it is to take these things on and off. Um, on the old design, they had these brackets, um, which are almost identical with the exception of, this does not have a little groove cut into it like the new ones do so the T-nuts wouldn't stay straight. And I was really struggling having to try to slide it on and get everything lined up. Um, and then I got the updated brackets and it just pops on and off. It's really nice. Now, in my opinion, at $299 for what you get here um, and the adaptability to an MFT, I know there's a lot of people out there that have the MFT. Um, it's really nice to be able to take advantage of the rails. I think that this is a really good deal. I would say that if you're going to get one of these, and you don't have these, I would absolutely get these Jessam guides to go with it. I think it's like another hundred bucks. I've seen people modify these on uh, like mag switch fences and actually use these ones on the table saw. Um, so you do have some flexibility there, but these are just really great to have. Nice little addition. Um, again, it does not come with the set. You have to buy those separately, but the stops, uh, the bit guard, all of that stuff does come with it. The dust collection port, all of it. Um, $299, $189.95, um, I think it's a win. I think it's a home run. Great job, TSO. Now, do I think that this router table is gonna be for everybody? And the answer is no, obviously not. But what I will say is that I think that this is gonna handle 90% uh, of the things that I would need a router table for, and I just really love that I can just pop it on and off and put it off to the side and store it. Matter of fact, it's small enough, you can just put it in a drawer. But in my opinion, I think the people that it's really gonna benefit uh, are people like me. Uh, who have a scenario like this, or if you're somebody that goes to the job site and you don't wanna lug around another router table, but you always wish you had the ability, I mean, this is just such a great solution for that. As always, links to any of this stuff can be found in the video description, as everybody knows. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Uh, and see you next time.